Today, I have a special guest on the channel, Daniel, AKA Hashlips. We're gonna answer the question, do you need to know web dev to become a web three developer? I think, I think what would be cool, let's, let's say like on the count of three, we both answer yes or no to this question. Do you need to know web dev to become a web three developer? All right, one, two, three, yes. yes. Uh <laughs> Oh, wow. we both said yes. <laughs> I wasn't expecting so, that. I mean, uh, I, because I wanted to say no at first, because then, and then I don't know what persuaded me, but I think it. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I can see it both ways because it's you know it's it's people are trying to become Web three developers because the, you know, that that's what that's kind of like the the catchphrase Web three developer, um, but they don't really quite understand what it involves, and then once they get into it. But let me backtrack real quick for those who don't even uh, know who Daniel is. You want to give a quick introduction? I forgot to even let you do that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's fine, JC. I, I, I like to stay anonymous in this space. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, my name is uh, Daniel. I uh, we'll go by the name Hashlips. Uh, you know, I've been in this uh, web development space, especially blockchain space for the past uh, two years. And, you know, I'm, I'm mostly known for creating the art engine that allows people to do generative code on the blockchain. But yeah, apart from that, artist and just a blockchain enthusiast. So I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much, JC, by the way. Very nice being here with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. That was great to have you. Um, yeah, I think Web3, blockchain, cryptocurrency, these are all like these huge buzzwords and people are just trying to wrap their heads around what does it involve and, and whatnot. And, uh, I think the biggest thing to understand is that when you when you talk about blockchain development, uh, there's really two different kinds of blockchain development. There's like the blockchain core developer, which you know you really need to know some some web development or some some development technologies like Rust or GoLang and these low level languages to do that. But most people, when you when you talk about blockchain development, most people are actually looking at like a blockchain app developer, which is like building on top of the blockchain. Um, it's kind of like uh, I always I like the analogy of a, a web browser, like you're not building the web browser, you're building apps or sites that work in the web browser. Yeah, I, I also think so. I mean, when you when you think about web, uh, web three development, it's not really that different. And I guess that's why we both, <laughs> both answered yes, because um, you're really taking all the technology stacks that you know. And for me, when I got into this, I I literally thought I was never going to be a, a Web3 developer just because you see these things in the news and you kind of read articles about, you know, the virtual machines and what they run on and how they work. Um, but it wasn't until I actually wrote my first line of Solidity that I realized that, wow, this is amazing. And this is completely um, separate from the front end, like a back end. And when it came time for me as a front end developer to integrate these things it was literally just the connection and boom bam there you go it's, it's exactly the same stuff you use react you connect so i guess that's that's what that's how i see it right mm -hmm. yeah i mean any you, you threw out that that word react and, and and so that's that's whenever they're jumping into web3 they may not know this kind of thing and so um i always i like the analogy of the red pill blue pill kind of thing too so like you take the red pill that means you're just going to dive right in. You're going to get confused. You're going to learn about, oh, there's these other technologies that I need to learn. You're going to kind of go back and forth, learning these different things that you don't quite understand. Uh, and then you're going to get confused and, and you, you might even be on the verge of quitting. And then you finally, out of frustration, you finally figure it out, figure it out. And uh, you go from there. Or you could just start out by taking the blue pill, the easy one, and, and just start with the basics, learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, web development type stuff, React, which is a framework. For, for JavaScript, like learn these fundamental things, uh, and then it's going to make your Web3 development journey so much smoother and easier. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, if, if we're talking now, if there's any listeners here, you know, today wanting to get into Web3, I would also suggest, you know, just like you said, you know, you start with the basics. Um, just get to know your normal stuff, your normal front end technologies, know what a framework is. I always like to start off with the pure the purest of purest things like HTML. I know it sounds boring, but look, I think these days kids growing up in the development space, they don't even know what's 
what CSS is anymore. Like they just know what SAS is. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, the, all these things just abstract from the underlying technologies, you know, that they are based off. So if you really want to get into development, I think even with this space, right? What's your opinion on that, Jesse? I mean, you've been in the development space for a while and I see this happening these days like quite a lot. All these frameworks abstracting from the core. What's your take on that? Mm -hmm. It's the exact same thing. People, uh, they hear these buzzwords like uh, React or Vue or Angular and they, get, they, they jump straight into learning these frameworks without even knowing JavaScript, which they're based on. And so if you don't know JavaScript before you learn these, you're also kind of shooting yourself in the foot because you're going to have to backtrack again. So start with the basics, even though like, like, like Daniel said, it's, you know, boring, whatever, but you have to understand these basics and have these fundamentals to build upon. Otherwise you're just going to have to work your way back down and then work your way back up again. So there's really no way around oh, yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, if, if you think about it, right. Um, when it comes to JavaScript, I've got many questions from people saying, Hey, why do you don't why don't you use typescript man typescript is the bomb you should use typescript well uh let me explain something about typescript okay it's very cool to use but if you want to scare yourself out of the coding environment the very first day <laughs> step in and use typescript if you want to get into the javascript world and understand you know how uh, flexible the language is and actually how cool it is use it purely and then when you want that you know more stricter mode then go for TypeScript or start off. With, I actually started off with C Sharp. So for me, it didn't make a difference because, you know, that's a very strict uh, language in itself. But yeah, I mean, basics are important. Hey? Um, but bringing it back just quickly yeah. to Web3, um, there's this thing, right? Uh, solidity and Rust, if you want to go for Solana. Um, what do you think, JC? Like, if, if you were to code on the blockchain, and you had to learn a blockchain technology. So what would you learn? Rust or Solidity? What would you go for? I mean, I, I mean, I feel like Solidity is way easier to learn than Rust. Rust is a very low level language. It's, uh, it, it's, it's pretty difficult to learn. If that's going to be your, your first language, I would not recommend it. <laughs> Honestly, that's my opinion. Um, and, and then like, like we're talking about too, like you could learn, if you want to learn solidity first, I mean, maybe, um, but you're just going to get half of the puzzle there because you're just, you know, going to be able to create the contract, but then how do you create your, your minting dApp? How do you create, you know, the visuals, the interaction, the, the, the UI that the user is going to interact with to mint, right? Um, you have to have these, these web development technologies under your belt too, in order to do that. So it, it's, there's a lot to learn. Um, but again, I think starting with the basics is the best, best route. I don't know. What, what do you think about uh, Rust? Oh, Rust, man, no, I'm not touching Rust. I, I saw Elon Musk actually, um, you know, <laughs> leaving a, a tweet saying Rust is the future. And I was like, man, like, please don't say that because now everyone's going to jump, <laughs> jump on this Rust wagon. Um, I, I don't know. I think everyone has their own flavor of coding and, and you know, so to each person, it's fair, right? Uh, people like more food, uh, you know, more food groups than other food groups. You know, I like bread, but anyway, so it's the same thing. It's your flavor of, of your yeah. choice, right? When it comes to development. Um, but I had a conversation with my friend, he's a backend developer, you know, in the uh, Web2 space, mostly with Golang. And you won't believe it, man. Uh, Jesse, when I explained to him, like just learn solidity it's the future you know get into it now he found it so hard to wrap his head around this concept and and that's when i realized okay. like if you if you look at this whole environment from you know as its entirety you're gonna get scared off but if you if you start dipping mm -hmm. in your toes in, in smaller things right look at an nft contract that's the simplest thing that you can do on Solidity right now. There's a lot of information out on, on channels. Look at um, Jesse's uh, channel, you know, you can come and be on my channel. There's a lot of information just explaining, um, you know, Solidity code in, in the NFT space. And it's a very, I would say, introduc introduction way <laughs> to get yourself, uh, you know, used mm -hmm. to using Solidity and these technologies. Um, because um, when you look at systems, big systems being built, how they are built in the web two space um you know you're gonna get scared you're gonna get scared off and um i find always the best is to do it in little bits and pieces and then you should be fine 
Uh, but yeah, I, I guess mm -hmm. I guess that's how I think everyone should get get into this firstly. With some web two. Yeah, knowledge. yeah. Start out with a, just a for sure. Start out with just a if you're gonna learn Solidity, start with a very basic contract. Understand the basics. Work through it. Um, you know, you know, put it on a test net, you know, just, just experiment. Like that's the, that's the way that I learn. Like I, I watch videos too, like and, and read tutorials and all that sort of stuff, but I learn the best by actually doing it, you know, implementing it, figuring it out, making mistakes. And you, you learn from that and you keep going. That's, that's the best way to learn in my opinion. <laughs> so, yeah, and watch um, as many tutorials as you can. Yeah. This is a promotion to promote both our channels. Do it now. Yeah. Just watch every single video you could find but i'm serious right i know i'm joking you don't have to watch there our stuff but i mean i'm serious when, when it comes to tutorials watch as many as you can like like take your weekends and just say it's tutorial weekend you know and you don't have to start off coding immediately but i do recommend when you do a tutorial at least type along you know it does help but um just make it your mm -hmm. instead of instead of netflix you know leave that series for a tutorial mm -hmm. Uh, and, and soon you'll get used to the terminologies and, and how it works. So look, to, to wrap this video up, Daniel, what, what parting words would you have for the audience? Um, you know, like, like I said, we talked about a lot of stuff. Rust, who wants to learn Rust? Um, if you're a Rust developer, I'm sorry, I don't want to step on toes. It's a great language. But, <laughs> um, you know, the reality is that if you're a Web2 developer right now and you're wondering how can you get into the space, I would say, you know, stop learning the newest bootstrap for just a, a second just pause watch a solidity video start up your own dap the dap seems scary but all it is is a decentralized app and the main part that changes is the connection to a blockchain instead of a backend uh, when when you are a ui front-end developer it's a big challenge and it's fun because of the blockchain's nature of being slow right you challenge your brain as a ux and ui developer to kind of make sure it's a smooth user experience. So you'll just become a innately a better Web2 developer anyway, if that's not your forte. But you'll have the added benefits of jumping on it now because Web3 is not going anywhere. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I, um, Web3 is like, okay, there's issues. There's issues with any new technology when it comes out, right? But Web3 is, is not gonna go away. So let's jump on, let's all get in there together and, and fix things that need to be fixed and improve things that can be improved and, and move on from there because yeah, it's, it's not going anywhere. So be sure to go check out Daniel's uh, YouTube channel, Hashlips. He has um, Solidity tutorials. He has Web3 stuff. He has uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, uh, probably to come. I know you've got at least uh, the, the, the basics, HTML, and I'm sure you're working on some others. Um, I've got some of those videos on my channel as well. So be sure to check those out. And hey, let us know what you think about this um, just talking style videos, those collaboration type videos. Do you want to see more of these on our channels? Let us know in the comments below. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Peace out. Thanks, Jesse.